Hello. Hi, Krisha. <laughs> Hi, Frank. How are you? <laughs> I'm well. How are you? <sighs> Episode 116. 116. Happy Thursday. Ha have I been counting correctly? I think that's where we yeah. are. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Man. So you've had 116 chances to go to KrishaandFrank.com. Well, you... well, well. I didn't, just, we didn't buy the website until just shish. after the Thanksgiving special. That's when we knew. <laughs> You've had roughly 116 chances to go check out KrishaandFrank.com. They're all on the website, all 116 of them. Yeah, and you can do that, and they're categorized, and you can watch them all. You can subscribe to our YouTube. You can buy our merch. You can go to SeemoreSmokies.com, <gasps> who we're affiliated yes. with. You can watch that every Saturday, or you can go to Seymour Smokies, and you can like click on stuff and like explore all of the cool places we're going to be going yeah. to. Yeah, and the way that works is um, I, we give them a shorter version of our Saturday show. Mm -hmm. So you subscribe to us on YouTube because you like us, and even my friend Bean, who will sit through 20 minutes of us riding the, going over the <laughs> sky bridge in yes. Gallenberg, just so he can tell me that he heard the obscure musical reference I made late in the episode yep. about Indiana Wants Me. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it makes me happy. That makes, you have no idea how happy, I guess it's the same when I listen to his show and I, I respond you to go, something. Yeah. yeah. It makes us happy when you, when you comment. And send us email at uh, christianandfrank at gmail.com or text us at that number that I Krisha love got. it when I get those random text messages. What's the it's number? cool. 865 236 0399. 236 0399. Okay. Yeah. You got it. <clears throat> I'm working on it. <laughs> so that's fun. Yeah. We've had some adventures, and I think maybe let's just, we could just make this our fast food episode. I was actually telling you before we started that. Um, so Grady Milligan, who I actually talked about when we went, when I was at, doing the, when we talked about me going to High Wire. And, yeah. and Oh, and the, some of our friends loved that episode because here you are, <laughs> you want to sit alone mm -hmm. at an um, outdoor-ish brewery, yeah. spacious open place. Open air. Open yeah. air place. And you go alone. And I couldn't wrap my mind around going someplace alone unless I was going to meet someone. Yeah. But you wanted to just go and be alone and enjoy and then two dudes talk to you. Well, I was really surprised at the response to that episode because there were a lot of people that like, felt the same way that you do. They're From like, the dude I, world, you go out looking to meet women. Right. Um, or some or a romantic partner, it doesn't matter. But you go out looking to meet, and when you see someone who meets the criteria, which would be you, alone, it's like, it's like woo, 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 here we go, <laughs> train's coming. So Grady Milligan was actually the person I was seeing at Highwire. Perform. He's yes. a musician. He's a musician, and I, I came this to is, know... This means musician. Like. <laughs> or like this, um, but he's a musician. And I came to know about him right right after the, the lockdown pandemic land started. And Knox Brew Tours was delivering food from different places oh. and they actually had and Zach Roscoff, right? Yes. And they actually mm -hmm. had a thing where you could order food and the Knox brew bus would come and Grady would get off and play a, a porch Jimmy. concert for you. He well, would play out wild. in your yard. I love that. And that's how I came to know about him. And that, he well, that's a good job, Zach, because your business basically went away because of the pandemic. So you reinvented. Yeah. That's clever. So he has that's, this little short bus. And I, Jerry and I went on one of the... My dad drives for them. He does? Yeah. Well, when they, only had, the, when they only had the one bus, Jerry and I went on the tour. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, they would, you do an Instagram picture with your number. Yeah. And, I mean, we were still, it was still in the two digits. Oh, wow. It's how long ago wow. it was. Wow, they're yeah. over a thousand tours now. Yeah, yeah, we went, we, wow. So, um, but that's how I came to know about Grady existing, was through social media yeah, yeah. and all of that. And when I saw that he was playing a high wire, I like, oh, I watched one of his like live Facebook lives. One day it came on Grady Milligan's live. So, so I watched because that. of this, I had been under the assumption that you and he knew each other and you would go to see him perform. Like Jerry and I would go when, um, oh, I just drew a blank. Actually, Callie Stelter mm -hmm. was singing with some dude from the front mm -hmm. page Follies. Mm -hmm. um, Ray. Ray Pineda, because he's got the same name and he thinks he's related to the lead singer of Journey. Yes. But... Uh, yeah, they did a gig at some wine bar. Mm -hmm. Why would Jerry and I go to a wine bar? We would not go to a wine bar. <laughs> we have no reason to go to a wine bar. It's the same reason you and I have a memory together at Sugar Mama's when we were when James and I were there and you and Jerry were there and we were there to see Shane Ryan and Victor Agreda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll, if I know the yeah, we go. We would go to things because that. But I mean, otherwise, right. I'm not, why would I go drink beer at a bakery? Yeah. I, <laughs> 
it's not something I would find time to do, except that I like those people. Right, but I don't. Re- I don't know Grady at all. That's a problem. Okay, so that's that's new to me. I don't know him. I mean, just enough to be like, hey, like I. You're kind of a fan. Like it's kind of a fan, <clears throat> but I just like I I like. I was like, that's cool. When I saw he was at Highwire, I'm like, man, that's a nice, that's a place where I can feel safe and go have a beer and it's open. So I saw him that night and (laughs) a few nights ago he was playing at Central Depot and I had clicked interested on the event, but I didn't, I was like, I'm not drinking right now. I'm not going to go. I don't even know Central Depot, but I'm assuming it's on Central Avenue. It is. And it's right by the little, where the train tracks is go. It's Central and Jackson. Jackson. Oh. Yeah. That's, isn't that, okay. Like where Millen Mine area is and all stuff right, like all that. All right, all right, all right. So it's right there on the corner. And um, <laughs> Grady sent me a, a messenger on Facebook. He was like, hey, are you coming to Central Depot tonight? And if so, can I ask a favor? <laughs> oh, man. That's, and, that's kind of forward. And I was like. Is he asking you out? No, 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 no. He, like, uh, no, 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 no. It's a little um, forward. But I was, he's like, if so, can I ask a favor? And I was like, well, I was kind of hemming and hawing because I'd already had dinner. And I'm like, I could go down because I know the guy that owns Central Depot. And I was like, uh. so I was like, yeah, I mean, I might stop by. And he goes, I just got done setting up and I forgot to eat. If you don't mind, would you please go to McDonald's and get me two plain cheeseburgers? Two plain cheeseburgers. And I said, so you don't want any Frenchie fries, you don't want to drink. You just want half you just a want, Big Mac. You just want two cheeseburgers, and you want bread, meat, and cheese. He was like, exactly. And he was like, it should cost you $2. I'll Venmo you. And I said, please let me That's hilarious. let me buy your two cheeseburgers. So did I drove he, two did, cheeseburgers did, down I, the central I, I would have Venmoed you anyway. I and I and He didn't. Because um, well, yeah. I insisted that he All not. Right. But... <laughs> I, I, hope you, I hope you put them in the tip jar. I'm just, I did, I did. <laughs> Come on, yes, I, I didn't mean to spoil the joke. I, I promise I just, you. That I is my natural you. comedic reaction. I, you and I are so he, similar he, he had his guitar case open, like in front of where he was playing at Central Depot, and I walked in and I held up the bag and I put it in the, t- the tip jar. Yes, yes. Um, because genius, like you. I just want you to know that I am the type of person that even if I... Let's just assume I was already in my cozy clothes for the night and I was still hemmed and hawing. I was feeling kind of restless. But if I'm already in my co- cozy clothes for the night and you need food, I will bring you food. You'll put on pants? I will put on pants Whoa. and I will bring you food. That's a, that's a lot. That's, that's... Even if I don't know you. <laughs> I, I've got a quick tangent on the idea of, of musicians, being yeah. a fan of a musician. So uh, when I neighborhood when I was growing up, there was this singer-songwriter and these two dudes. They called themselves, I think, like bookends or something mm-hmm. like that <laughs> because they took the name from a Simon and Garfunkel album. Yes. Da, da, da. My cousin dated one of the guys, oh. like in high school and maybe a little bit in college, mm-hmm. and they broke up. So he wrote a breakup song about her. Oh, no. All right? And my uncle thought it was the most hilarious, wonderful thing, no. that, or how wonderful it is that my cousin Diane has a song written about her called What a Waste of a Pretty Face. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's, a, it's actually, I'll play the song for you at some point, or maybe I'll put a link to it in the description, because uh, what a waste of a pretty face, what a downright rotten sin, and it goes on. And I mean, it's... It's brutal. Except that it sounds like a beautiful song, but it's brutal. All right. Mm. Fast forward many years later. Yes. And I have now reconnected via Facebook with my friend Mary Teresa, whom I think I've told you about. Mm-hmm. She's got the beautiful place out in the Hamptons, and she's got the place in Florida, and blah, blah, blah. But she's she took over the with her ex- free time the running the Alumni Association mm-hmm. for our grade school. Mm-hmm. It's on Do Not well, Disturb. I under swear control. it's on Do Not Disturb. On just Do Not Disturb. But um, so she runs the for our grade school, and in the course of visiting with her and talking with her and and reconnecting with her, she mentions that she and uh, another girl from our class, who are best pals, are have gone to see Chris Br- Chris Brown is the name, which seems mm-hmm. weird because there's another plenty of other Chris yeah. Browns in the world. But this kid, Chris Brown. From bookends, I guess they reunited, uh-huh. like uh-huh. in the 2000s. Uh-huh. This, this, these guys who were, you know, they were like when we were back in Ursula High School. Right. Or where, it's then not you go to the Ursula. Chris Brown. No, no, it's a, not, a white right. guy named Chris Brown. Okay. Who, right. But anyway, the point is that these girls who, now this high school band, the guy who would play mm-hmm. the, the Rathskeller or play the high school coffee houses, or they would right. go see him. <gasps> so my friend, 
who doesn't know my cousin. Yes. They were talking about, oh, and then we, what a waste of a pretty face. There was their favorite song. And I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> my, that's about my cousin, Diane, <laughs> who was beautiful. It's still, it's just an attractive woman, but I mean, she. At the time, beautiful woman. But yeah, <laughs> it fit. The song was true. The song was accurate. Oh, oh, <laughs> well. Now, Diane is mellowed, I'm sure. And Do she you know doesn't watch the show. Who else participates in accuracy? <gasps> hmm. Well, so many of our clients, they all do. I'm Steve's Tree Service. Oh, they wow. must be very accurate in their work. That's right. Yes. They would not waste a pretty limb. <laughs> they would not. It would be a downright rotten sin. It would. It would be terrible. But <laughs> what they'll do is if it's an ugly limb, they'll amputate it. They they'll will. They'll knock it right off. They'll, yeah. they'll take it down. In fact, the whole tree, that they sent some pictures of uh, doing work up in Pigeon Forge because they cover the whole area. Mm -hmm. You know, Not like, just like Knoxville. Yeah. If, if you're anywhere in East Tennessee, uh, Steve's Tree Service is the one for you. And he's probably got friends all over. So if you're watching from somewhere else, mm -hmm. you know, ask Steve to recommend sure. somebody. But here in this area, like your friend needs trees taken care of. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of trees. It's the beautiful part of the country. But my gosh, somebody planted a bunch of those stupid Bartlett pears. Bradford pears. Bradford trees. pears, rather, oh, yes. And Bartlett those, pears are delicious. Bradford pears suck. And those stupid red bud trees that just grow like weeds. Mm -hmm. And those are a problem. Got to take them down. But we also have oaks and maples and, and pines. Cedar. That, is that what the one was? Yeah. The problem tree? Yeah. The problem tree is a cedar tree. They're, mm, they're beautiful. Yeah. It's good so, firewood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Steve will take care of it with his crew. They've got the tree climbers mm -hmm. who will climb up there, saw off the limbs, and then you lift like this giant telephone pole of a tree. Mm -hmm. And then they like, yum, yum, it's yum, so cool. yum. They section it and it comes <laughs> down in pieces unless they got the room. And then they, when they can show off. Yeah. yeah. When, they, when they can show off and they, they, they know where it's going to land, obviously. <laughs> they have a little fun that sometimes when it's a big, wide open space. You can find them on Facebook at Steve's Tree Service or... 865-257, I'm pulling it out of my rear, 6214. Well done. Thank you. I knew it was 257. Oh, how? I don't know how. I can't remember it. Yeah. 865-257-6214, I'll try. Um, I can't even remember our own number. So yeah, uh, well, <laughs> that's fine. It's fine. <sighs> uh, do you remember last week when you dad armed me on one of our road trips? Yes, because I confessed it to my wife. I didn't touch you. <laughs> no, you didn't. I, I, but I didn't. I but if you had, it would have been fine. But it's also, I didn't mean you to do it. You weren't attempting to grope me. You instinctively stabbed the brakes and you went, whoa. <laughs> I can't even believe I did it. You yes. were shocked that you dad armed me. I was because we're, like, we were driving why. through Sevier County and yeah. sometimes people stop short to turn into, oh, there's what I'm looking for. It's oh, Titanic. It's always And like you that. don't know because they just slam on the brakes and they turn into the Titanic or mm -hmm. they turn into whatever they turn into. And you're like, whoa. Oh, so yeah. I automatically put the brakes on and I just did this. <laughs> and you. Without was touching like, you. I was like. Did you just dad arm me? And he went, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> and I'm like, maybe because you care about my safety? I do. <laughs> and it was so funny because you... I told you, you I care deeply about this show. You, <laughs> you were as surprised as I was that you did it. <sighs> and then I was surprised when we were in the Arby's parking lot. We do drive a lot more. We should explain it because of yeah. our Seymour Smokies deal. We are spending a heck of a lot more time in the car. Together. Yeah. A answering, we answering, and asking very awkward questions. We, we carpool, as you know, because it makes sense. Right? Why would we both? Why would drive? we not? Yes. My but, car won't. It won't last. <laughs> it, and let's just of, be real. When you're going into the Smoky Mountains, it's a lot of uphill. Yeah. So we take my car. Right. We'd have to push like. Ring. But yeah. So we were driving. We dad, dad armed you on the way to one of our gigs. Mm -hmm. Our, our record. I don't know which one it was, but. Oh, I remember. And then we got hungry. Hangry. Hangry, oh, I think, I was, is what we got. When, when we got done, we both were hangry. But I was like, if we don't have food now, I'm going to say something I don't mean. So this is another one of those weird, um, we, have, we have this odd partnership in mm -hmm. that we get, you know, I don't know what it is, but when you find someone you can do a show with, you do a show with them. Yeah. So we're, you're, you're hangry, and I reach down, and I grab my backup Arby's coupons. You went, <laughs> <laughs> you just, you Arby's coupon me. And I was like, oh, two for six. But you would, but as I'm doing it, you said, oh, how did you know I was thinking about Arby's? I'm thinking Arby's. And I didn't know you were thinking Arby's. I just thought, Jerry buys me Arby's gift cards mm -hmm. at uh, the Kroger so I can get the gas points. Right. And I saved the Arby's um, mailer, mm -hmm. you know, so in case I want to get a sandwich. And I discount. discovered that you can mix and match the two for six. That was a big deal. I was very hopeful. 
So I'm eating my fish sandwich. Well, we were talking about how you wanted a fish sandwich, and I thought, well, if we have to, I'll get one. Right, but, but it wasn't, you didn't want one. It wasn't Friday. Mm -hmm. I was going to save that and have it. Jerry well, and I you were, can have your meat. We had plans. Jerry and I were going to try our first Arby's fish sandwiches together. Right. Uh, we did on Friday, um, but you were you had one. Mm -hmm. I was going to, yeah, I wanted the, the spicy brown mustard. Yeah, oh, the turkey, which that wrapped Why are we doing good. a commercial for Arby's? I don't know. But they never hired me. I want, I applied to be an endorser for Arby's, and I, I got rejected. Right. We can stop talking about Arby's, right. except that we were sitting in the parking lot nomming our food. Nom, 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 nom. And uh, as you do, you know. I'm not gonna, I can't drive and eat. I have another story about the time I failed miserably at driving and eating. Driving and eating, it's not safe. You might as well just park for five minutes and shove a burger in your mouth. <sighs> and then you don't get to have fun stories like the minivan that was parked next to us. And uh, I don't know where they came from, but they didn't come out of the minivan, but they were coming into the, the minivan. Yeah, they had been to the Arby's. I think right. might, the restaurant might have been open. Oh, well, no, I know the inside is open, but you can only get like to go. You can't so sit they, down. So they got there to go, and now they're getting back in the car. And it looked like an adult and two boys. Two, two boys. Three and they're boys. like, you know, tween, tween teen. Yeah. And one of them's like, they're all in their it's karate. After school hours. Yeah, and they're in their karate uniforms, and they're whipping, you know, they're boying it up. They're whipping their their belts around and the dad's like Ugh. i got the rvs and, yeah and dad gets in the driver's seat and the boys now are supposed to put themselves yeah into the, the side of the other side of the van and somehow they must have decided to eat in their car because we're now leaving what else are you gonna say and yeah. as we're backing up you were like i'm honking well, at oh, first, no, wait, no, at i'm first, sorry it was the other way around they were leaving uh -huh. and we were still eating yes so we're parked yeah. And they start to pull, and the car, st their van starts to back up. And I'm like, I, bam, bam. Well, at first you had said, hey, hey, before they even closed the door, they didn't pay any attention to you. So then you, gave them, the, you gave them the toot toot. And like the kid, the, the one of the kids like from the passenger seat's like looking like, what? And, but isn't saying anything. And so the dad's trying still, to figure out what to the say. The dad's still backing up. And finally you're like, hung, 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 hung. <laughs> like you give him the, like, hey, something's wrong. So finally, like, the passenger side window rolls down. <laughs> Mind you, I just said they were wearing karate uniforms. Mind you, Frank, Frank yells out of the window. You, you dropped some of your outfit. You, 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 you dropped some of that outfit. Your outfit, it's, it's on the, it's on okay, the ground. It's like a black belt or a, one of the colors of belt. Is on the floor. And I mean, on the floor, on the on the parking lot, on the on the asphalt next to the van, and the, they're about to drive away and drive over it. The teenage child does not get out of the car. Of the not. younger child does, who was still like they don't they don't even know what an outfit is. Or, no, and the dad like comes around around the minivan and looks at you, and you're like, your outfit's on the ground. <laughs> I couldn't. That's the, is that the day I was stroking out and yeah. couldn't remember? Yeah. No, it isn't. It was a different day. But one of those days when I couldn't remember Space Needle. No, that was a different this, day. Uh, so seriously, I might be ill. Uh, <laughs> but, I couldn't remember Karate Belt. Yeah. Or anything. Uniform or anything. You were just like, your outfit. <laughs> See, I'm hanging around with too many actresses, or excuse me, too many actresses. <laughs> but costume, like it's a like. I could have said costume. you could have said costume because you dressed up like a karate man. Your costumes on the floor, it's fabulous. It made me so Good happy. Good golly, that's it. You're yelling at three. I could have Paul Linded them. That three guys, funny. three guys. Your, your outfit, you drop part of your outfit. It made me uh, so happy, along with the fact that I got to eat food for the first time all that day. So one, um, two fast food stories. Yeah, one. Mm -hmm. Is another bean starving. another bean story, but uh, we are we were in Seattle uh, uh -huh. doing a broadcast uh -huh. on K Rock, and uh, we had made arrangements to drive to Vancouver, Canada, to interview David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson. Oh. And this is when the X Files was still new. One of and my they, first crushes. And we went to the set while they were filming the X Files. Uh -huh. So we're driving to Not Vancouver. Gillian Anderson. Well, I know you yeah. mean, but it, so we're going to so I'm so I'm driving. Somehow I'm driving a rental car, and <laughs> Bean is in the passenger seat, mm -hmm. and we're trying to drive. We're driving from Seattle, Washington, to Vancouver, Canada, but we have to stop. So we decide to stop, probably a Dairy Queen, mm -hmm. and we get two Brazier burgers or something. And I'm trying, and he, he didn't. He's like, "Well, <laughs> what are you waiting for?" And Bean wants me to get on the road. We have to hurry right. up because Jimmy and. Uh, Kevin and the rest of them, whoever else is involved in this, they also are driving, but they have a different car. Okay. We, we're, yeah. And, and we can't be late. Right. Bean can't be late because nope. Frank has to eat. And right. Bean has to eat. 
And so I am trying to eat this <laughs> hamburger yeah. and drive on the interstate into Canada, and I, it's it's just it's disintegrating. Oh. It's all over me to the point where I had to pull off to the side of the interstate. Oh my god! Open the car door and just get out there and stand. <laughs> so the 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 <laughs> detritus of the fast food could fall off That's of me, amazing. and it was disgusting and embarrassing. <laughs> That's amazing. Second st tangent, very mm -hmm. quick. You brought a McDonald's burger to your man your friend. Yes, my man friend. <laughs> Grady friend. Yes. Grady. I, I took two cheeseburgers and it struck to me a bar. <laughs> then why wouldn't he just For want someone a, who I barely know. Why wouldn't he just want a Big Mac or something else? But he wanted two McDonald's cheeseburgers because it was cheap Plain. for $2. Um, one time in my life, we're, back, we're at a thing called Adam's Morgan Day, mm -hmm. and we're to introduce Donna Meikert, introduce the headliner, which is Jermaine Stewart. Mm-hmm who was popular in the 80s with one hit called uh, We Don't Have to Take Our Clothes Off to Have a Good Time. Right. So we play that song on Wave. We're the only sta with the station that plays it the most. We get invited to come down there and, have a good and time. introduce Jermaine Stewart. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know him. We did, I mean, we, you know, right. how do you know what he, you don't know what he looks like? You've seen maybe him on the, maybe you've seen him on the record. I don't know. Mm -hmm. We're in this RV waiting on uh, Jermaine Stewart. And he's the, and he comes out of the, the back bedroom mm -hmm. Wearing nothing but tidy whitey briefs, just like regular yes. little boys' underwear. Right. <laughs> he's, he's a tiny person. Mm. He's, he's passed away now, mm -hmm. but he was a tiny person. But he was a, 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 a skinny. To, I'm saying he wasn't a little person. He was no. I'm sorry. Right. He was a grown. I, I should say that he was a, a maybe five feet, whatever. Right. But he was so thin. Yes. And that's <laughs> part of it. A dancer, mm -hmm. and he kept. And he's wearing just these little white underpants. Because he's going to go on stage and sweat. It would be sweat. so awkward. And we're supposed to interview him, maybe, and then go out and introduce him. And he says, well, wait, I gotta, he's going to have to eat. They're going to have to give mm -hmm. him his food. Mm -hmm. So they bring him McDonald's, mm -hmm. right? Because it's convenient. I mean, the place is right. packed. Yeah. There's a McDonald's right there. They go, they get him a Big Mac. And they bring him to Jermaine Stewart. And he looks at it and goes, oh. Oh, I can't eat all that. Just give me half. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me half. But the, the way he said it. <laughs> It's my eat favorite all that. thing just ever. Just give me half. I just have. <laughs> oh, I can't eat all that. It's, it, just give me half. <laughs> I love <laughs> that so much. I don't mean to be derogatory in any way, but I love. We all loved it and became a running gag. And just give we, me half. Anytime we cut anything, we cut anything. Oh no, just give me half. That's so funny. <laughs> and and we had a delight. And then it turned out <laughs> that was the icebreaker. So we ended up having a delightful time with Jermaine Stewart because we all could laugh about it. Yeah. Including him. Oh my god. So. <laughs> Every time that song comes on Give the radio, that's all I can think we about is is because then his know. his people yes have to get find a knife. It's hard to cut a Big Mac and cut it in half so that he can eat just the half of it. It's 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 hard to cut a Big Mac. I know. Yeah, he probably could have taken the top half or the bottom half, but no, they. That's how I eat them. What? I Sliced? eat them like two burgers. In in top and bottom, mm -hmm. or like like top and bottom, I eat them like two burgers. I do top bun. And all the stuff and meat, and then I do bottom bun, all the stuff and meat, and I throw out the middle bun. Okay, I haven't had a, a McDonald's burger in a very, very long time, mm -hmm. but I do love me Culver's and uh, Mouya, mm -hmm. and I will quarter them with oh. a knife. I will cut them into four quadrants, mm. and depending on what I'm wearing, might eat it with a mm, fork. Eat my shirt. I get that. But I also like to wear, as you know, the Butterburger Baby Bib. Yeah, you when do. you're at Culver's. I need a Balter burger. Balter and abridged. Abridged has but These are the, beer places. Abridged. It's funny that your go to places are beer burgers. If you've not had a burger from abridged, you are doing life wrong. I feel like I've been to abridged. Where is it? Uh, over by Aaron Presbyterian Church. Oh, yeah, yeah. I parked at Aaron Presbyterian Church and we went mm -hmm. to abridged. You know, I've been to like, all these places like once. Yep. I go to these places once because we want to try them, but then there's always a new place that I want to try. Ask me the best burger in Knoxville. You just said abridged. Interesting. Yep. All right, hmm. Bruce, I'll see you there. I would have picked, um, not Watson's. Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. Is it over? Yep. Oh, um, audible.com, audible trial, audible, 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 audible. Audibletrial.com slash Kasha and Frank. I knew it. I just, yeah, I, did, I, I did not stroke out there. I actually knew it. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get the plug in. We'll see. Audibletrial.com slash Kasha and Frank. 30 day free trial. You get a free download that you get to keep forever and ever. And then you can do all your things. You can do you. Sometimes I go through my long-term memory to see if I still recall things to make sure I haven't stroked out. My granny 
remembers things from when she was a very young child, but she can't remember what she ate yesterday. Yeah, I'll even remember short-term things. I just check to make sure. <laughs> you okay. just do a little memory check? Like, yep, I'm still how good. do you know that you aren't just imagining that it, it's a memory and that you're not confirming a made-up memory? Because really... Did we, did we see the Space Needle? I was, okay. In Seattle? Yeah, no, I've been inside the Space Needle in Seattle. I've never been inside the one in Gatlinburg. Yeah. Exactly. And I was inside the Sun Sphere recently. Took a, went to take a tour. No, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. how do you know that your memory is, is remembering something that's a real memory or a fabricated memory? Well, because I don't have we fabricated fa memories. We fabricate memories all the time. I do? Every memory you have is from your, from, because over time. Oh, you time, conflate things. Right. But you remember over, two things that are separate, but you imagine them as if they were together. Right, and then over time, your memory changes it because it's from your perspective only. So eventually, by the time you're 10 years out from a memory, it is just a complete figment of your imagination because you don't actually remember what actually happened, actually. Uh, so? I, I think there has to be a thread of objective truth in there because why, otherwise hmm. we're all just living in a, in a fantasy bubble yeah. and nothing's real. Well, there, I mean, there's a thread of truth there, but... I mean, I mean, more than a thread. They I, say I think... typically the things you remember the most are traumatic events. Well, most of my life, thankfully, then... Is traumatic, so that's why I'm so good at memorying. Bingo, bingo. Memoring. I just said memorying. <laughs> oh, God. I'm stroking out. I haven't eaten or drank in anything either. Okay, we gotta go. Hot dog. I'm gonna memory. Hamburger. You know what we should have for dessert? Fudge. <laughs>